Hi guys, welcome to today's MCAT question of the day. As always, we'll be working through one of our many MCAT practice problems found at MCATSelfPrep.com, home of the free MCAT prep course. I'm Garrett Bourne, a 97th percentile MCAT tutor, and today I'll be walking you through one of these practice questions as if you're one of my very own private tutoring students. Now, today's problem comes from the end of lesson mastery quiz found in lesson eight of the Biochemistry One module. Be sure to hit pause and try this problem for yourself before you listen to my explanation. Now, as you can see here, the question says, a rare disease occurs at a frequency of one in 10,000. Geneticists find that it is due to a recessive allele that is lethal when homozygous. In a city of 5,202 individuals, how many are carriers of this allele assuming hardy Weinberg genetics? All right, so in order to answer this question, we're going to first need to be able to understand the math behind hardy Weinberg genetics and second, we're going to need to be able to do that math in our heads. So let's walk through that together. All right, now the most important thing to remember when solving any sort of Hardy-Weinberg problem is to memorize the two equations, p squared plus 2pq plus q squared equals 1 and p plus q equals 1, where p is the frequency of the dominant allele and q is the frequency of the recessive allele. Now we know from this question stem that a particular disease is occurring at a frequency of 1 in 10,000, and that happens when the recessive allele is homozygous. When Again, when that recessive allele is homozygous, that means that there's two of them, so two of the Qs, Q squared. So we know that Q squared is occurring at a frequency of 1 in 10,000. Now, the math for this problem is a little bit easier to do when we transition that 1 out of 10,000 fraction to a decimal. And I know that can be a little bit intimidating for some people to do in their heads. So I've got a quick explanation that will make that a little bit more manageable for all of us. So... I figure we can start with the decimal 0.1. We know, I think all of us can assume that we know that that is 1 out of 10 is the same as 0.1. If we want to get an even smaller fraction, say 1 out of 100, we simply move the decimal point 1 to the left, as you can see here. So 1 out of 100 equals 0.01. If we want an even smaller fraction, say 1 out of 10,000, we would simply move it over two more places to the left for 1 out of 1,000 and then 1 out of 10,000, as you can see here. So 1 out of 10,000 is the same as 0 0.0001. So that's Q squared, which is great. But now we need to solve for Q. And that means that we need to do the square root of Q squared. And again, doing a square root in our head can be a, a little bit intimidating. So again, brief explanation for all of us here. Um, I like to think of whenever I do a square root in my head as rather is kind of doing it backwards. I like to think of, okay, which two numbers multiplied by each other will give me the number of the square root that I'm looking for. Um, so for instance, say we're trying to find the square root of 1 over 100. Well, I think, well, I know that 1 out of 10 times 1 out of 10 equals 1 of 100. So that means the square root of 1 over 100 equals 1 out of 10. Now we can look at that in decimals here and see again, 0.1 times 0.1 equals 0.01. And this is helpful because it reminds us that when we are multiplying decimals, that the total number of decimal places in each factor um, it gets added together to give us the, again, the total number of decimal places in the product. So um, if we have one decimal place here in this factor, one here, one plus one equals two in the product. So in our particular case, we know that we're trying to solve the square root of 0 0.0001. There are four decimal places there. So our square root needs to have two decimal places because again, we know that two plus two equals four. So what are we looking for here? 0 0.01 times 0 0.01 would give us 0 0.0001. Again, 2 plus 2 equals 4. So we know that the square root of 0 0.001 equals 0 0.01. Now we've solved for Q. And again, using the second equation here, P plus Q equals 1, we know that P then equals 0 0.99. All of that said, the question is asking us to solve the number of, or is asking us to find the number of carriers of the allele in a city of 5,202. So in order, in order to do that, we need to utilize this um, second por or this middle portion of the top equation, 2pq, and find that frequency. So we just plug p and q into that. I substitute 1 for 0.99 just to make the mental math easier, and it will be close enough to the answer choice. Um, so 2 times 1 times 0.01 equals 0.02. So we know that's our frequency. We multiply that by our total population, 5,202. And again, that math can be a little bit intimidating to do in our heads as well. So I like to think of it as, okay, we have two one hundredths of 5,202. So what is one one hundredth of 5,202? Well, we know that that's roughly 52. So two of those would be 52 times two, which is 104. So 
we know that roughly there are about 104 carriers of this allele in the city of 5,202 individuals. All right, so we did all that math together and we came to the answer of roughly 104. So again, coming back to our answer choices now, we see that one of our answer options is 103, which is pretty darn close to 104. So let's go with that and see what our answer is. Now, if you enjoyed this MCAT question of the day, be sure to give it a like. For more MCAT questions of the day, be sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel and enroll in our free MCAT prep course on MCATSelfPrep.com. If you're really looking to maximize your score, be sure to check out our elite tutoring services and request a free consultation with any of our available tutors. We'd love to chat with you about your situation and how you can maximize your MCAT score. We'll look forward to hearing from you soon, and we'll see you next time.